Hello and welcome to State of the Economy. Uh, today we have with us Mr. Rahul Kullar, Chairman of Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, who is at the center of uh, this big debate over net neutrality. Uh, now, Rahul Kullar is known to be a very tough, no-nonsense uh, regulator. And uh, the telecom industry in the past has had a taste of his uh, toughness. Uh, but on this occasion, uh, 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 Mr. Kullar uh, is uh, at the center of this debate which uh, which, uh, which, which has pitted the, the telecom industry against, uh, as it were, small uh, service uh, providers and content providers on the internet uh, who feel that uh, they are not getting a level playing uh, field on the internet to conduct business. Uh, so we'll, we'll discuss some, some details of, uh, of this uh, debate. Uh, welcome to our show, uh, Mr. Rahul Kuller. So uh, I believe you've received some over five, six lakh uh, responses from uh, uh, small uh, content providers, small uh, uh, internet uh, players uh, who are pained about uh, some deals which are being struck by big telecom players and some other internet based uh, uh, businesses uh, like Flipkart. Uh, of course, this is, this is the past. Uh, now, uh, you issued a telecom uh, consultation uh, paper uh, which uh, looks at some of these issues. Uh, now, why are people prejudging uh, this whole debate? Uh, is there a overreaction or is there something that you would wish to clarify? Um, let me begin with one uh, caveat and then I'll turn to the clarification. Uh, the caveat is this, uh, the consultation process is still on and it will continue till the counter comments come in and thereafter when the open house discussions are held. Until those discussions are over, no views have been formed and no views will be formed in the authority. Okay. We keep an open mind, we will hear everybody. And it's only after that okay. process is complete, we shut down and then go back to the drawing boards and write out whatever we want to. The second is to issue some sort of clarification. It is certainly true that we have received a large number of uh, things in our inbox. Let me break those up into two or three uh, classes, if I could. Uh, in the initial uh, first few days, there were just pure hate mail. Okay. One and a half, two lakhs of hate mail uh, between you and me that gets us nowhere. It is not a response or a constructive response to a paper. It is just hate mail. And they assume that you had already ruled in favor of one party. I, I have no, I mean, I, can, I don't wish to make any response to hate mail. Mm -hmm. Then came uh, a string of comments, which were basically one person making the comment and then crowdsourcing it using technology with another 100 or 50,000 people. Now, yes. It may indeed be the case that there are uh, 100,000 comments, mm -hmm. but in effect, those 100,000 comments are the equivalent of one comment because the 99,999 who tagged themselves on okay. have no other comment to offer. Mm -hmm. Third, uh, this morning, for instance, I was mentioned to you, I received a stack of a whole bunch of postcards. postcards. Mm -hmm. And I showed them to you, it just had save the internet, save the internet and a political party's name at the back. Mm -hmm. Again, it helps the authority in no way whatsoever mm -hmm. to come to a decision. Sure. I think the problem for many of these uh, inputs has been um, partly sort of a frenzy that has been built up by... Uh, partly the media, partly interested parties, and partly others, without a uh, full understanding of what was going on. Let me make it clear. It was never, ever the intention mm -hmm. of the regulatory body to look at, uh, you know, regulating the internet or yeah. regulating the content on the internet mm -hmm. or permitting uh, TSPs to block or uh, act discriminatory with uh, a particular... Or allow varying speeds on the internet. Uh, uh, I'll come to that separately, but, you know, none of this sort of... The key phrases have been open internet, no issue, free internet. 
by and large, the freedom of speech should not be compromised. And you have no said issue. that net neutrality is something you also believe in, right? I, I believe in net neutrality, but I think that there are certain shades of net neutrality which we need to be aware of. And I will come to that later. But I do want to clarify that it was never the intention to do any of these things. And I think in a, in a fit of sort of misunderstanding, people have mm -hmm. uh, gone ahead and uh, written things, mm -hmm. uh, which perhaps on reflection they will think about uh, once again. So those are the two comments I would like to make, one on a caveat, one on a clarification. Mm -hmm. The others I will amplify during the course of your interview. It is true we have received uh, a large number of this thing, but as I was saying, mm -hmm. those comments will be uploaded to the website. The difficulty for us is going to be that if they're merely repetitions, mm -hmm. yeah. then it really doesn't matter how many there are. Mm -hmm. uh, in effect, it becomes just one or two or 10 or 15 or 100. Mm -hmm. One last comment. Please do understand that the hits on our website have only been of the order of about 50,000 which means 50,000 people have gone to the website and read the document. Mm -hmm. So I leave you to judge. So people are speaking without having fully I, read the I document. I don't want to, but I leave you to judge uh, where the other comments are coming from mm -hmm. if the document itself has not been read. Tell me, the consultation paper itself, uh, based on which people are making all kinds of comments, uh, whether they've read them or not, is another issue. Uh, it essentially uh, seeks responses on uh, what is called OTT service, over the uh, over table, the over the top services, right, uh, which are provided by using the, the telecom uh, infrastructure. infrastructure. That's correct. So when will you come out with the, the, the report uh, post these consultations? Is there a deadline for... Uh, no, we don't set timelines to these processes until the consultation is completed and the open house discussions are over. As you would know, even in all open house discussions, I have always mm -hmm. heard people through and then, even then, given them one last opportunity to send one okay. more, thing, more comments in writing. And that is how we will continue to do business. Is it, uh, Mr. Kuller, since you regulate the, the telecom industry, which is essentially the pipes, the, the telecom infrastructure, and, uh, and you, your job is to essentially to, to, to provide a framework, a level playing field, which also grows the industry. Now, is, is that the reason why there is a, uh, a premature suspicion that, that you may be uh, sympathetic to the telecom industry as opposed to the, the, the internet players, uh, content, content providers, or other kinds of service providers? Now, let me break that up into two parts. So First, is that possible? Is it because you're a... Meaning maybe people are drawing the inference that because we are the telecom regulator, therefore we will uh, na naturally side with the telcos. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very unfair assumption. If anything, the last three or four orders that we have issued have been uh, uh, hard for telcos and good for customers. So yeah. I'm not... I don't want to go into deep matters yes, of detail. That's true. That's so so far, your record has been good it's, for customers. It, and, it's never, I, and I don't think that merely because there's a huge public outcry, mm -hmm. that should not be the concern that drives us. What should be the concern is the quality of inputs and the quality of the debate that follows, mm -hmm. and ultimately how that molds the decision that is finally taken. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that it's also very important to understand that, and I mentioned this only once, the paper was about over-the-top applications. Okay. It was not about net neutrality. Okay. And the reason was that this dates back to August 2014 when we started this whole discussion with industry. Mm -hmm. And industry, I mean over-the-top on one side and telcos on the other side. Mm -hmm. And I must say the mood at that time was far less acrimonious than it has been now. So it's the Flipkart incident which made this very uh, very no, polarized I'll debate. Flipkart, right? I will I'll come to Flipkart in a minute. I think that two points I want to make. One is that when you look at over the top, you have to break it up into two two groups. Mm -hmm. One are the over the top communications mm -hmm. providers, and the others are the other over the top. Let me separate those out. Think of Skype, Viber, WhatsApp. Yeah. Think of WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. It's doing an SMS. 
now it's doing voice. In effect, how different is it Competing from... with a telecom player? In effect, how diff different is it from a telecom provider? Yeah. Except for the fact that it's over the top, it's unregulated, it pays no regulatory costs, it pays no compliance costs. So who will regulate them? That is the question. Okay. That who, who is takes exactly a call? the question. Who takes a call on this? Well, at the end of the day, the government will we will have to it. figure out what to do and then make recommendations to, to government. government. But the question will not go away yeah. merely by wishing it away. Yeah. Sure. You have to be able to answer the question, what are you going to do with these applications? So you're saying so, that even if you don't look at it, the government will have to look at it. Somebody has to, somebody look, has at to look at it. Second, in jurisdictions, even like France and in Germany, all these are what are called classified as electronic communications. Okay. And in all these countries, there is a licensing regime. Yes, it's light licensing. Okay. They require authorization. They require some clearances from government. But they cannot function without those clearances. Okay. Now, all this has been listed in the paper, but I don't want to prejudge what conclusion we will come to. Okay. The point, only point I'm trying to make to you is that the class of OTT operators who are dealing in the communications business yeah. have direct and frontal contribution contri uh, competition with the telcos mm -hmm. and have no obligations which these guys carry. So it's not a level playing field. We have to decide as a country mm -hmm. whether we can allow this to continue so, or not. So essentially what you're saying is that it, this, is not, this is not just the TARI uh, uh, chairman's responsibility, this is a, the responsibility of the entire policy making establishment. That is one, absolutely correct, and that is the one big issue on one side. Okay. The second is, we looked at other OTTs, and the reason was not because uh, those are directly our jo domain, okay. but that if you are putting a paper out on OTTs, you should not be accused that you didn't do a comprehensive job. Okay, because that was not in your domain. We will we'll take a small break here. Please don't go away and keep watching RSTV. Welcome back to State of the Economy. Uh, we are speaking to Mr. Rahul Kullar, uh, Chairman of Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, on the contentious debate that is going on around net neutrality. Uh, Mr. Rahul Kullar, you, you, you rightly said that you are looking at, uh, in your consultation paper, you are uh, looking at OTTs in, in the context of uh, uh, their competition with the uh, mainstream telecom players, uh, to the extent that they are in the same space, like providing voice uh, services or data services. Now, in regard to the broader regulation of OTTs, OTTs and the players in the smaller players in the internet, you were saying that that requires a, a larger debate. That requires right. a much larger debate, and I have explained to you. So, so does it, are you saying that the, the, too much has, is being read into, therefore far, you are... Far too much is being read yeah, into Because you are it. looking at a very limited issue, right? Oh. I, we are primarily concerned with this, but it was important for us to raise the other issues. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. We give the site the example of Uber as a taxi company okay. and what happened in Delhi. Uh, and there are many other instances of individual applications. The point we are trying to make is that essentially when something rides on the network, mm -hmm. it bypasses any domestic regulations. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a fact of life. Mm -hmm. The question to ask ourselves is, are we ready to continue with this or are we going to wake up when some accident happens? Okay. For instance, three months ago you heard some comments being made about how e-commerce needs to be regulated. Not from us, you heard it from the government. From the government, yeah. And you heard that 20 departments are going to get involved in it. Yeah. That raised raise another debate, big uh, conflict. Somebody else is going to raise the debate that, look, security is a big issue and the law enforcement agencies can't get, if WhatsApp is going to do voice, how do I get my, mm -hmm. how do my law enforcement agencies get it? And this is the flavor of a large number of other OTT apps. Mm -hmm. I have no solution to it, mm -hmm. but I am willing to pose it to customers, to consumers, to everybody in India. Give us your comments. We will amalgamate them. We'll make sense of what you what you say, and then whether we take a decision or we send it up to somebody else to take a decision, okay. you need greater clarity because it is far better mm -hmm. to plan for these things now rather than have knee-jerk responses as and when problems show up. So that's the... So essentially you're saying that you're in no hurry to come up with some 
quick conclusion and quick decision and you want this, this bigger issue to be examined by, by other stakeholders, by the government also and then come up with a broader uh, yeah, let me clarify po po policy regime. Let me clarify two things, uh, which is why all OTTs are concerned. Please remember the telecom authority is responsible for all matters pertaining to speed mm. as part of quality of service okay. and price insofar as it relates to tariffs. Tariff. So this affects not one, it affects all OTTs. Yeah. Okay? Mm. Other matters, licensing, non-licensing, authorization, mm. regulation, interception, mm. those come later. So, but there are many aspects on those other class which require inputs from a whole range of people. The first order of business is to get customers to tell us, clients to tell us, or popular word today, stakeholders to tell stakeholders. us. And then we see what we make of it. What we can decide on our own, we decide on our own. What we can't, we push up. Yeah. So in principle, uh, Mr. Kuller, you you're agreed that in principle, players on the internet should not be, whether they are big or small, discriminated against uh, on, on, the, on speed and on, uh, on pricing, right? Mm -hmm. Let me clarify that. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me put... As a principle, broad principle. Yeah. Broad principle, I think, what I am committed to is no blocking, yeah. no throttling or degrading okay. of individual sites. Transparency in traffic management. Transparency. These three are completely non simply not negotiable. Okay. Okay? These are not negotiable. The, age, the, the, the gray areas, which is what is uh, agitating people, at least some sets of people, is the whole question of price. Now, in Tim Wu, who actually coined the phrase mm -hmm. neutrality, mm -hmm. is on one side of the debate, and his argument is zero price. And there are a whole lot of people on the other side of the debate, mm -hmm. led by uh, at least two or three Nobel laureates, mm -hmm. who are saying, no, there has to be this discriminatory pricing. Okay. Now, this debate has been going on in the US for 20 years. And yeah. if we start the debate, you can carry on for another 20 years here without any practical solution. The US has not been able to resolve this. this is not solved. So I, do, I don't think that's a particularly model way to proceed in the matter. Mm -hmm. However, Understand what the OTTs are saying. The OTTs are saying, don't throttle our innovation. Don't let TSPs pick and choose who are winners and who are losers. Okay. Don't let them block. Mm -hmm. Don't let them use trans trans uh, trans traffic management as an excuse for okay. Okay. Uh, screwing us up. Meaning, these are the range of sorts of issues that they are concerned with. Mm -hmm. Remember, business, meaning there may be end consumers, like you and me, who just use the... Mm -hmm cell phone or something like that. But there are others who have websites yeah. who are as much consumers and producers. They produce services mm -hmm. and they sell them to other consumers on the other end of the market. It would be B2B, B2C. Yeah, B yeah. Yeah. Now those guys are looking at it primarily as a business opportunity. As are people on this side. The telcos are looking at it as a business opportunity. So there it's a pure B2B sort of problem. So the essential, uh, Mr. Kula, the principle as I understand is the, the whole regulatory framework, whether you are doing it or whether uh, some other agency uh, appointed by the government is doing it, is to not to throttle innovation. That's the, if I understand correctly, that's Absolutely correct. one line, right? And there's another aspect to this debate, uh, which Mr. Kula, I'm afraid not many people are talking about. In India, 900 million people are outside of the f very framework of the internet. Now, when you talk about uh, digital inclusion, which is also part of the larger mandate of policy as well as regulation, uh, where are these 950 million people in this debate? Uh, sometimes th there are some critics who say that it's at the moment it's it's a debate that's going on between uh, uh, between the uh, internet haves and the uh, internet wannabes, you know, uh, who are also in this pretty much the similar category. You know? um, I was at a conference last week where somebody made this comment that the internet it turn, is turning out to be the great non-equalizer. Uh, and yeah, that's what, the yeah. sympathy was, the, the sentiment was exactly yours. Let me make three points. One is rural teledensity is 40%. Mm -hmm. 
there are 50,000 villages which simply do not have 2G connection. Forget 3G, 4G. And broadband connectivity, if you've read the broadband report, will tell you exactly how far behind we are. Yeah. Bottom line, if you're going to reach out to 900 million people or a billion people, mm -hmm. and that's part of the national telecom policy, that is a part of the new government's policy for mm -hmm. empowerment as part of Little India, you need investment mm -hmm. yeah, sure. in network and upgradation. And that's the problem. That is the argument that the telcos advance. I have not given you any argument so far what the telcos say, but this is the argument which the telcos advance, mm -hmm. saying, why should I roll out if I'm not making enough money? Mm -hmm. Now, this is their argument. It has its place, just as the arguments on the other sides have their place. Mm -hmm. But I think the minister's comment on this was very clear. He spoke to the Economic Times a few, a week or 10 days ago, and basically said two statements. Mm -hmm. The first statement said, the I'm all for, minister. Yeah, I am all for net neutrality. Mm -hmm. And in the tail end, he said, however, we have to look at outreach to a billion dollars, uh, to billion customers. Billion customers, yeah. Now, that ex exactly captures yeah. the dilemma that you are describing, that look, on the one hand, there are these 100 million who yeah, have, sure. let's say, this thing, or 200 million who have wireless and broadband connections, and one billion who don't even know what this damn thing is. It's about. So, so it's a bit so, like having perfect net neutrality among 200 million people with some 900 million left not out. even aware of what's going on. Uh, that's, that's one scenario. <laughs> or do you, do you have uh, this debate? Uh, I'm for net neutrality. I'm, I just I would say it up front. But uh, I also feel that we need a more nuanced debate. If debate were to be, this, this very debate were to be held amongst say 900 million people, it would have been more worthwhile, right? Yeah, and, and can I ask you in this context, in the US, for instance, there is near 100% penetration wireless, there is near 100% uh, uh, landline, uh, 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 and there is near 100% uh, through uh, cables, you know, satellite, etc. And after that, after having created so much fundamental inclusion, they are still going through 10 years, 20 years of debate. Uh, I, I wonder what path will India follow? I mean, I, I'm, just, yeah, I, I think the, I'm just a bit puzzled. You know? Yeah, I think the answer is this. I think the, the US circumstances should not be transposed on India. We, should, we need to devise something on our own. On our own yeah. And you cannot follow blindly follow either the US or the UK or any particular country. At best, you need to look at them for what are called, what I think are, from some them. experience, what you consider to be good practices. Mm -hmm. Second, please ask yourself the following problem. Supposing there are 100 million guys who've got broadband right now, and 900 more million join the queue, mm -hmm. and infrastructure stays the same. Exactly. What's going to happen? It's like a choking road. Yeah. It will be exactly like a choking, the, it, the system will break down. Yeah. The system will simply break down because there will not be enough bandwidth and the only consequence will be much, much slower speed. So who brings the new investments here? That, you come back to that same question. So if you're going to talk, mm -hmm. if it is a policy goal that you have to talk about 900 million people, mm -hmm. then you cannot dodge the investment question. You simply cannot dodge it. Sure. The second part of the problem is that when you are looking at it this way, you cannot afford to say that I will let the TSPs do whatever they want yeah. in the, under the garb of yeah. or the excuse of yeah. uh, making revenue for investments. Yeah. That's not acceptable. Yeah. Third, what then are the general principles or rules that we can devise? Mm -hmm. Some middle ground. That middle ground may be much closer to what the net neutrality guys yeah. have in place or want mm -hmm. than it is to what the telcos would like. Sure. But even if we are going to get there, we have to go through this discussion. We have to go through this discussion. Yeah. Second, my experience and you know, you know, very much wiser man once told me that uh, when you take an all or nothing approach, you end, end up getting nothing. So what I'm trying to get at is this puritanical approach to net neutrality is good in its place. And yes, you can have this debate for another five years or ten years. You won't give us a practical solution there. But if you're looking for practical solutions, and pardon me, regulators as well as governments are not in the sure. sterile debate business. We are in the doing business. Sure. Now for us, 
I think the, there are certain completely inviolate principles. You cannot use traffic management as an excuse. That you mentioned earlier. No blocking, no... Many of these principles, the moment they are accepted, a lot of the heat will die down. Essentially, you are, yeah. So you're saying that the debate has no. to be nuanced. Then, then you come to, all right, once these are settled, all right, now we come to the gray areas. What is permissible, what is not? Example, zero rating is permissible. It's been permissible in the US, in Germany, everywhere. And even the latest FCC rules essentially grandfather all zero rating schemes and say we will decide on a case-to-case -case basis for the future. So we could follow I, that principle there. I was in Ofcom recently. Now, Ofcom is the other extreme. They allow ISPs to make money to fund their broadband infrastructure. What have they done? They have put in place a voluntary code of practice signed by all stakeholders that we will adhere to these net neutrality principles. Mm -hmm. But they have not tied themselves in knots about that. And the regulator looks at any new scheme issued by the telecom provider and judges it on its outcome. If it's a good outcome, okay. If it's not, now, so what I'm trying to get at is... So you're basically saying that it has to be nuanced and the present polarized debate will only lead to all of us going round and round without any solution. Thank you very much for talking to us, Mr. Rahul Kohler. That's all we have in this edition of State of the Economy. We'll be back with you next week. Thanks for watching.